In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to sync a Lumion animation with drone footage so they can be compiled into a compelling presentation that blends existing reality with a proposed design. You can use this technique to paint a clear picture of your project before it's built. That's what Lumion's all about. This is an advanced tutorial outside the realm of just using Lumion. To get this done, we're going to need some drone footage, a video editing program, and a design model to render in Lumion. First, let's talk drone. I have the DJI Mavic Air. It's a rock solid starter drone with more than enough capability to capture cinema worthy shots. Here's a massive renovation I recently designed in Denver, Colorado. I shot this video with my Mavic Air during construction. This is the clip we're going to use to present the proposed design. Three things to keep in mind when capturing drone footage for an animation background. First, simple movements are best. Just hold the stick to the right and keep your speed low and constant. Second, the camera angle should be close to eye level and perpendicular to the structure. And third, be sure to lead in and follow through the shot to leave yourself plenty of room to work on the timeline. This clip is 50 seconds long, but we're gonna match our Lumion camera to the frames at 22 seconds and 41 seconds. This will allow us to fade in the render design over the partially constructed house as the camera is panning. I use DaVinci Resolve to export these frames from my clip as JPEG. If you're looking for a powerful editing program, DaVinci's free version has everything you need to get this done. We also need to render an animation to lay on top of the drone footage. I designed this entire house in SketchUp, and since the layout permit drawings were directly connected to the design model, 3D and reality turned out pretty darn close. We just need a green screen object so we could remove the background from the rendered animation, isolating my design while overlaid on the drone footage. The technique I'm about to show you will work with just about any modeling program, but SketchUp is my go-to. Stick with me to the end because there's one critical step to make all of this work in Lumion, and I don't want you to get frustrated like I did. Let's get to it. Okay, so inside of SketchUp, I'm gonna click on the file dropdown and choose open. Now, on my desktop, in my temp folder, I've got my class files folder. And hey, if you'd like to follow along with me, you can click the link in the description to download all the files I'm using in this tutorial today. I'm gonna open up this SketchUp model, and this is the file that was linked to the permit drawings. And let's take a look around. As I orbit, you can see that we've got our shadows turned on and our profiles turned on. And I can tell you that if you just go click on this work scene tab, it's gonna get us into a much snappier, faster moving SketchUp environment. Now, when I'm thinking about like what I want to overlay on top of my drone footage, I definitely don't wanna see these kind of uh, generic uh, context houses, and I definitely don't wanna see the rest of the site. So I'm going to select these two houses and then right click on them and I'll choose hide. Then I'm gonna double click into the site and right click and you can see that there's another chunk of the site that I can hide and then back out of this. And just imagine this, just this portion of our model, if we kind of like recreate that drone footage, this is what we want to overlay on top of that drone footage. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now the next step inside of SketchUp is gonna to be to create a green screen object. Now this is really easy and you could do this in a million different ways. I'm just gonna draw one big rectangle or square around my model, use my line tool. I'll go straight up on the blue and straight back on our green axis and then right back down on the blue. I'll tap A for the arc tool and then we'll just give this kind of a rounded off uh, bottom edge there. Use my push pull tool to push it through tap the E key for the eraser and tap control to soften. And then I'll tap control again to turn off soften and get rid of those edges. And then I will triple click this geometry and choose make group like that. Now I do want to make sure that I scale this out, you know, pretty far and wide like that. And then perhaps I will move it straight up on the blue axis like this. So it's just kind of barely sitting below uh, my, my site or my terrain. That looks pretty good like that. And then I'll tap the uh, B key for my paint bucket tool. And let's see, I'm gonna choose just a simple green screen look, but we're gonna change our minds on that. I'll show you just a little bit later when we get to that you know, one critical piece that's gonna make all this work, okay? So 
I'll just take a lap around this model. That all looks pretty good. Um, I can save this model and then we're going to send this to Lumion using LiveSync. Now, the Lumion LiveSync extension is available on the extension warehouse. And once it's installed, you just click play. And now it's going to bundle up this SketchUp model, push it over into Lumion. I'm going to click on create new, and then we're going to start with a plain environment. All right, so now SketchUp and Lumion Live Sync is doing its thing, and we've got our file lands here over into Lumion. Everything looks good. Now, I'm gonna select that model, and then what I like to do is click on the Type In field down here, and on the uh, Y dimension, I'm gonna make that a 10, so that our model sits 10 feet up above that Lumion ground plane. You can see what's going on there looks good enough, all right? And I just like to insert my models at like a known point. Okay, so now to, to kind of make the point of like what we need to do here is uh, we're gonna set up a camera, all right? And then we're gonna take a look at our reflections. So we'll go into our photo mode and I just wanna set up like a simple camera right here and we'll snapshot our view like that. And then uh, let's see, so you can, you can kind of see how like some of these reflections are happening, you know, uh, let's see, let me orbit around, you know, we're getting some reflections in that glass, right? Like in that pure glass. So if I go back over here, uh, perhaps I'll add an effect of reflections like this. And then uh, we can turn on our speed ray reflections. And maybe I'll even add an uh, active section, I'm sorry, reflection plane like that. And let's just add another one like right there. That looks good. And hey, for good measure, let's just add another one here. Looks good. I'll click the checkbox, make sure that we're back on that camera. And when I render this, you know, just do my quick update. Look at how we're getting this like green haze in our glass, right? So that's a bit of a bummer because what's happening is the, the green screen is showing up in our reflections. So that's a bad thing, right? Well, there's a little trick that we learned uh, in creating this tutorial of how to get rid of the green screen object in the reflections. So let's hop back into build mode and we're going to click on our materials and then click on this color here. Now I can tell you that the first instinct is to go to a standard material possibly, but here's the thing about pure glass is that pure glass will not show up in reflections. In pure glass, we can dial the transparency all the way down. Uh, we can turn off the reflectivity. Uh, we can turn off our glossiness. And then we can choose a different color for the pure glass. Now, I started with a green screen, right? But I can tell you that like in my experiments, it seems like it's better to use a blue screen because any of the little artifacts left over from like keying out that, that blue screen are gonna just not be as noticeable. They're gonna feel more like a sky, all right? So I'll just make that like kind of a, a decent sky blue. I'll check okay. And then I'll go back into photo mode and take a look at this camera now. So look at that. See now our reflections, our, our, our blue screen is not showing up in our reflections because it's pure glass and because it's uh, transparency is knocked down and all the glossiness and reflectivity is turned off we're in good shape. Follow me to the next tutorial and I'll show you how to reverse engineer the exported frames into Lumion cameras. Sounds tricky, but it's easy. I'll see you in there.